I'm here with Tammy Hahnemann of Fire Mountain Gems and Beads. And you know, this whole show is about metal and, and clay and all kinds of great things. And you're going to show us how to make this beautiful necklace using charms and pendants out of um, silver art clay. That's exactly what we're going to be doing today. Mm -hmm. I love metal and I love wire, and I'm happy to share it with you. Absolutely. Okay, so the art clay comes in a package, which you need to just open, mm -hmm. unwrap, and then you want to condition the clay so that you get the molecules all in the right place. Mm -hmm. So we're just going to condition that a little bit. Is it one of those things that you got to open it right when you're going to use it? You want to have everything ready to go okay. before you open it. You want to have everything in place right. and have it all ready to go. And then mm -hmm. I'm just going to oil the work surface and my tools. Okay. A little bit of olive oil. Oh. So I'm going to oil the, the surface of my tools, mm -hmm. my work surface, and then some of the things we'll be doing later. Yeah. Just a little. Just enough to keep it from sticking. Exactly. And then I'm going to roll this out to an um, even thickness. So I place a marker on either side of the clay so that mm -hmm. when I roll it, it's even all the way across. Kind of right. like rolling out a pie, but making sure that it's all mm -hmm. one level. I'm going to roll that out to a three-card thickness, which I have done here. Okay. Move that up here. And then I'm going to impress this three card thickness clay onto a rubber stamp. I'm going to invert it upside down. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to place cards underneath there to keep it so it goes to just a two card thickness. So, so again, I'm keeping it even, but I'm going a little bit thinner. Okay. And that'll give me the room to impress my texture of the rubber stamp. Mm. And if we've oiled it enough, it will release from the rubber stamp, <laughs> <laughs> which is always a, an unknown until you do it. I'm going to flip this over, and we'll just quickly peel that away so you there can see go. the texture. Oh, that's perfect. And then from here, I'm going to cut out my shapes. This is where you start cutting out your charms and your pendant shapes. Mm -hmm. And this is a shape that I just cut out of a manila folder, so you really can make it any shape that you want. Mm -hmm. I'll just go around this with a sharp needle tool. Mm -hmm. And I'll trace around the entire shape of the cutout, kind okay. of like a pattern. Yeah. And then once I've cut out that, I'll remove the pattern. And I'll just make a little bit of a spot where I want my holes to be for later. Mm -hmm. And then I just set that aside to dry. Okay. How long does it usually take? Again, it depends on the humidity and mm -hmm. uh, the temperature and the climate that you're living in. Right. You can expedite that with a hair dryer. Um, you do want to try to limit how often you use any extra mm -hmm. drying um, exactly. materials just because it will buckle and it will misshape. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it comes back out, but it does right. compromise what you're doing. And then I'm going to, once it's dry, I refine all of the uh, imperfections of the piece. Okay. So I'll go through with a needle file and I'll redo the holes. And then I'll just go around it very gently. And this is just a salon board that you can get in any drugstore. Mm -hmm. And I go with... Um, what I have found to be a fairly consistent grit, I'll go with the blue boards. <laughs> uh, you know, one side's a little firmer and one side's a little smoother. And you want to do this gently. This is the most mm -hmm. fragile stage of the clay. And, and also, if you were making some of the charms pieces and the circular pieces, you would do it the same way, just cutting out different shapes. That's correct. That's you can do any shape you want. Mm -hmm. And then we'll fire. Uh, okay. You can use a kiln, but we can also use a torch. Mm -hmm. so I'll just light that. And then with the clay, you want to just make sure you go around in a uh, circular motion so that you're heating it evenly. Mm -hmm. And eventually it'll burn where you'll see a flame, and that's the binder burning off. And then it'll start to change colors. Okay. And once it gets up, you can see the smoke, that's the binder beginning to burn off. Mm -hmm. And it'll get to an orange salmon-y glow. You want to maintain that color. And it always depends on the thickness of the clay. Uh, mm -hmm. But this you'd want to hold for just about two minutes. Okay. And the goal is if you start to see it um, getting too shiny, right. you want to back your flame off. You want to always maintain that color, mm -hmm. but you want to um, not let it get shiny because then you're melting it. Okay, that's a good tip. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. can go so far. You could go really far <laughs> and then you have just a big puddle. Uh, and then once it's fired, it does have this um, matte finish to it, mm -hmm. and that's just the, the surface of the metal, and so you just need to burnish it. And you just take a, a steel wire brush mm -hmm. and you just burnish it, and eventually it will get shiner. You can use the back of a spoon. The brush just helps to get into the details of that rubber stamp texture. Absolutely. And then once you've done that over the whole piece, it will come up and it will look this shiny. Wow. That Which is kind great. of fun. Yeah. You could also throw this in a tumbler if you have one available to you, but you really, mm -hmm. it doesn't take a lot to get it to this point. Absolutely. And then here I've just shown you what it looks like with a patina. 
Okay, so you can decide which texture you like best. Uh, which finish with the mm -hmm. um, a more of an aged finish, you can mm -hmm. you know stop the patina at different lo colors if it's blue, mm -hmm. red. Um, Absolutely. And now we'll slide this guy over. Now we get to put everything together. Yes. <laughs> now that we have all of our great pendants and and charms, whichever it was that you were making, or both, which is what I love about these pieces. Okay, so we. Um, this is where we'll do some of the wire work, mm -hmm. and I've taken, this is 14 gauge dead soft wire. Mm -hmm. I've cut a three and a quarter inch piece, Okay. and then I just hammer the ends. Okay. I'll just lightly tap the ends until both ends are flattened. Okay. I you can like see that, that here, mm -hmm. yeah. And then I'll turn each of the ends into a little small circle, almost like making a simple loop. Mm -hmm. And then I'll go back, and making sure I keep those loops on the outside of my curves, I'll start to make my S curve. Gotcha. And then here you can see the S curve finished. So that's going to be your clasp. And that would be your clasp. Mm -hmm. And then I've just hammered it a little further for an additional look. Yeah. But you don't have to go there. Yeah. That's certainly your choice. It looks good, though. Thank you. Okay. Um, and then this is 20 gauge dead soft wire, and I've made just simple S's, which I'll use for connections later on in the piece. Okay. Okay. And then here I've taken my S clasp, and I've linked on two different um, pieces of chain, okay. equal in length. And then at the end, you can see some of the disc shapes that we've made, which I've also, um, I've put three holes okay. in. That's so that the other option. Exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I've put three holes so that it can then be made into a multi-strand necklace. Let's take a look and see how you put it all together. Well, and as we have our regular chain here, our mm -hmm. disc with our three lengths, and I've added the length of chain here as a charm necklace, mm -hmm. a single length of chain, and then a longer length of chain where I've t attached the pendant that we made earlier. So you've got a lot of texture there, too. Oh, lots of dimension. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Tammy. Oh, thank you. Katie Hacker is up next.